Hello guys, it's me Glef back again and welcome to another video. Today on September 28th, DECA released an update called The Shatters and a Bounty. This update contains tweaks to the Shatters that everyone has been wanting since the release of The Shatters and I'm happy they have listened. But before I go into the video, tomorrow I will pick my 4000 gold giveaway winners. So if you want to get a shot on getting 4000 gold, check out the first link down in the description below. Let's jump into the update. Tekka says, Hello Realmers, although we call it the Shatter's Tweaks, this update brings a lot more to the table. We have reduced the loading times and worked on other bug fixes, improved the usability and did some changes to the loot distribution and answering all the requests we got on Discord. Yes, Saturn is now tradable as meant to be. At the end of the post, you'll find a little bounty that gives you the opportunity to claim some very cool rewards. Enjoy. So the first thing they have fixed is the new Paladin and Trickster SD set appear in the appropriate quest chests. Usability. Improve the callout feature with a better timeout. Now portals have a global timeout after being pinged where any other player need to wait before pinging them again. This is great. So now you can't spam a portal. For example, in Fungal Cavern, when the Crystal Cavern portal came up, everyone could just spam it and it would cover half of the screen. So that's a very nice improvement. Fix the bug where Fungal Cavern's boss dropped loot in the damaging water. Now loot always spawns on land. Spinal Quiver and Quiver of Shrieking Spectres no longer have 0 0.5 second cooldown and can be used back to back as long as there is enough MP. Fixed a bug in boss battles in Puppet Monsters Encore and Mountain Temple where certain attacks disappeared instantly after being executed. But now we come to the probably the most hyped thing about this update and it's the Shatters. The first thing here is quite important and it, it says reduced base HP to varying degrees on all standard accursed dungeon enemies. As always, we'll continue to keep uh, keeping an eye on things to hit that balance of challenge and pacing. Added a unique sprite for the Stone Paladin special super attack. Reduced the damage of the Stone Gargoyle. Changed the projectile sprite of the accursed Stone Gargoyle special attack to be more visually fitting. Tweaked the firebomb animation to be more obvious and fluid. Added a blue shield icon to players when being granted invisibility via village teleporters to clarify you are safe for a few moments. Increased the circling range slightly on fire depths and their accursed variants. Lowered the chase speed slightly on stone mages and their accursed variants to prevent shot stacking. Lowered projectile range and projectile count on blow bombs. Reduced invulnerability of the Forgotten King on his phase 1 attacks by 2 seconds. Reduced HP scaling on of all 3 bosses. That's a pretty huge one. And they've increased the drop rate for the Defiled Equilibrium on mage enemies. The Forgotten King now drops a minimum of 1 of each of his tiered item drops similar to O3. So that's a lot of changes actually. And I'm happy they reduced the base HP on almost all the enemies and especially the bosses and it seems to be lowered on the clearing minions especially in the village and that's also nice and they've uh, changed like the fire bombs to be more obvious and some stuff to prevent stacking because i've seen some deaths which has just been ridiculous but i'm happy they launched this update now i feel like after this o3 event people want to do the shatters again and this is a nice balancing and will probably make it a little bit faster because before even with the best group it took almost 35 40 minutes for one shatters and that was not really equal to the like uh, the difficulty of o3 compared to the shatters since i myself think that the o3 is harder but takes less time even if you even the time you have to take in uh, count uh, to set the run up but I like this change. They've also added plenty of new skins for this update to be autumn theme. So the first one is the Raven skin. I'm not sure if that is, that's a character skin. It looks to be a pet skin. Then we have corporate necromancer. I kind of like that one uh, with the suit and tie and like uh, suitcase like that. Then we have Oktoberfest bard. 
I think that's pretty cool looking, uh, pretty cute. Then we have Plague Doctor Mystic. We all we already have a Plague Doctor Assassin from ages ago, but now we have a Mystic one. Looks pretty decent. Then we have a Scarecrow Assassin. I kind of like that one. I like I like it because it's kind of small and jumpy. It's like it has one leg or one pole it's standing on. So I I, I kind of like that. I think that's my favorite. Then we have a clipboard pet skin. Uh, looks pretty uh, weird. Should should have been with a reconstruction update last year. Then we have floating beer pet skin. Then we have jack o' lantern. Not sure what that is. Then we have bloody ambrosia. Ah, this must be feed power. Then we have a latte, and then we have a pumpkin spice latte. So th those are the new skins, and my favorite was probably the assassin skin. So here we have some other changes and they've actually improved the loading times. I'm going to try to load up the games later and see how much the improvement has done. Because before it took like 30 seconds to start the game. Um, and they've removed Month of the Mad God token drops and encounter resprites. Sad immune is now tradable, that's very nice. And they have also some plenty of bug fixes, but I'm not going to go through those. So, with the arrival of autumn, in the northern hemisphere, the days are getting smaller and colder. Yes, I can feel that. It's cozier to stay inside playing Realm. And for those of you that stuck with us during quarantines and are still joining during this time, we want to give a little extra something for your support. Whenever you make a purchase or of select boxes or packs, you will get one or several autumn gifts. The mystery item that contains many rewards will, with potentially very high value. Autumn gifts don't add up to the price of the box or pack. They're also saying, the last time we had a similar program we gave out over 1 million in realm gold, over 200 skins and 150 SD items. This time we want to give out even more, but we are also aware of the fuss it cost. We will keep... A, a close eye on the submissions and try to react as fast as possible to abuses. So they are referring to the whole vow controversy when he submitted I think it was 200,000 gold and then he got banned for duping and that that whole drama I'm not going to go over it but at least uh, they are taking that into consideration and trying to act when there are something fishy going on. So this is the autumn gift that uh, will be uh, usable and if you get the autumn treasure you can get the secret hoard, backup stash, key of key to orcs armory or mirror of vanity. And there is a whole list of things you can get in the autumn uh, gift so I won't go out and say everything right now but it's like basic items in token drop so character slot vault chest, mystery SD chest, uh, solar energy drink, ambrosia, feed power, and all that stuff. So that's pretty nice. Hopefully there won't be a controversy like Vow again, and hopefully we can have some happy members with that uh, uh, get some free 100,000 gold. And I think that's everything for this video. So we've gotten Shatter's Tweaks, which has been really nice, and then the Autumn Gift, which is a potential really nice thing to get extra if you buy gold. But that's everything for today. Don't forget to join my 4000 gold giveaway, join my Discord, follow my Twitch, and do everything like that. And I'll see you guys later in another video. See you later. Bye bye.